Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about the top cybersecurity concepts to know on the job. So this is for anyone who is in their early career and really wants to get a grasp on what you should know going into the job. Maybe you have an internship or a job lined up already, or maybe you just want to get an idea of what it's like to work in a cybersecurity role, especially in your early career, which is the main perspective that I have. And this video is going to be explaining all the concepts that I've heard of and seen the most in my first three years of working as a cybersecurity analyst. All right, so starting with the basics, number one on this list is the CIA triad. So if you're a cybersecurity student in college or took a cybersecurity bootcamp, then you most likely know of the CIA triad. And they are the three pillars of everything that you'll be doing as a cybersecurity professional. And CIA stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So these are the three things that are needed for a cybersecurity program to be good and secure. Secure. And oftentimes when you're working in a cybersecurity role, you're always going to be going back to the CIA triad as your why of what you're doing, all the things that you're doing. For example, you may be implementing some kind of security control that affects confidentiality, or you may be implementing secure backups that relates back to availability or using some kind of hash function to check for content integrity. Majority of the time, cybersecurity projects are going to tie back to one or more of these cybersecurity concepts. Confidentiality, which is probably the most straightforward that you probably already know, is just making sure that only the people who need to know certain information know it and making sure any information or any processes or documents that people don't need to know aren't available to everybody. Integrity is making sure that data wasn't tampered with or changed without going through proper processes or making sure that only the right people change or update or delete that data. And then of course availability, it's one of the most important ones but also one of the most expensive just because keeping things alive and running costs a lot of money, especially when you're going to the 99.99999 percentage of when a website is alive. There's no website that is going to be on 100% of the time. And that's definitely not something that you promise to clients or customers just because if there was something terrible that happened or some kind of natural disaster or, or there was some kind of data breach or a security event that happened at your company. But of course you wanna get as close to there as possible. So availability is one of the most important things in cybersecurity because if users or security personnel or company employees don't have access to their data to do their jobs, to access their accounts, that is a whole nother story in terms of reputational damage and everything else that comes with it. So that was a long winded answer of, of why the CIA triad is important. All right, so the next topic is IDS and IPSs. So intrusion detection systems and intrusion prevention systems are going to be one of the main topics that you probably talk about as a security professional because oftentimes this can be where you find the first trigger of a security event or a security breach. The intrusion detection system is one that is kind of the more basic version of the intrusion prevention system because just like it sounds, intrusion detection only detects some kind of intrusion or some kind of security event, but it doesn't necessarily prevent it. So the main purpose of an IDS, intrusion detection system, is to give an alert to someone through email, through a dashboard, or through some kind of ping or message that some event has happened and then they're going to look into it. The action is going to be taken by the, by the individual or the team who was alerted on that security issue or event. And then moving over to the IPS or the intrusion prevention system, these definitely have a lot more automation built in just because it can detect security events as well as prevent them. The IPS can actually intercept network packets and detect whether or not there is some kind of malicious traffic or activity going on and either drop the packets or reset the connection. IDS and IPS tests are specifically network security technologies that are meant to prevent or detect some kind of malicious network traffic and then be able to also alert a specific team or an individual about that security event. Of course, there are pros and cons to both of these approaches. For example, an IDS may only be able to alert and not take any action, but an IPS may have false positives and, and drop legitimate packets if they're suspicious or are flagged by the IPS. So it's really just a double-edged sword, and these are likely already implemented at your company. All right, the next topic on this list is the SIEM, or the Security Incident Event Manager. The SIEM is a software solution where basically all of your logs, all of your data gets put into one place and aggregated 
it so that you're able to then analyze it and it also takes a load off of your plate by analyzing activity from various different sources and various different applications resources etc across your network siems collects security data from network devices servers domain controllers and everything in between so it really is just an all-in-one place to have all your security events and it definitely makes your life easier as an soc or a security analyst because all the logs security events issues will go into this one siem tool and you may be spending a lot of your day looking specifically at the siem for any alerts any suspicious behavior and then you can go in and dig deeper into whatever security issue it brought up the siem essentially combines the security information and security events part of things into one tool so that you're able to manage all of your logs, all your information, occurrences that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. And honestly, it just makes the job and your life a lot easier. All right, next up is disaster recovery and business continuity. So this is one of the main things that go back to availability. And even though not every cybersecurity professional is going to be dealing with disaster recovery, for example, when something bad happens, what are the steps that your company is going to take to make sure things are going to get up and running as soon as possible if servers or applications actually went down? And that is also where business continuity comes in, where for bringing the system and everything back up after a disaster does happen. So this side of cybersecurity has a lot to do with backups, extra data centers, or offsite locations that your company may fall back on if the main servers or main data centers go down, how long it will take to get everything set up, if God forbid everything does go down and you have to start everything up from scratch. And of course, a lot of this stuff you won't be dealing with on a regular basis, hopefully, but there are different hot sites, cold sites, everything in between for how long it'll take for your backup infrastructure or data center or resources to be able to get up and running again. And then of course, a huge part of this is also just making sure that your people or your employees in the company know what to do when everything goes down. If they're not able to access their work, if they're not able to access certain systems, then there should be some kind of policy or procedure that your company has to make sure that people know what to do in the event that something goes wrong. And especially when it comes to natural disasters. And of course, for companies, one of their main concerns is their people, the ones who are doing the hands-on work. So typically employees are also considered as company assets or company resources. That sounds really bad when I'm saying it this way, but, but basically it means that they want to protect their people, their employees. For example, if there's a natural disaster, they want to make sure their employees are safe, have food, water, shelter, things like that to make sure that safety is already accounted for. All right, next concept on this list is DLP or data loss prevention. So this mostly pertained to me when I was working as a junior pen tester in my previous company. And essentially everything that we did as a pen testing team had to deal with DLP or data loss prevention. Whether it's someone stealing data, viewing data, exfiltrating data through email, some kind of network traffic, any way that data is able to get exfiltrated out of the company, out of some application that I'm testing is tying back to DLP. And this doesn't have to be specific personal data. It could be cookies. It could be logs, verbose or long error messages that applications throw out when there is some kind of error and it just dumps a whole bunch of data about the application and how it's set up, the functions that are being used. That all ties back to data loss prevention. And if you're going into a pen testing role on the offensive security side or even the defensive security side, data loss prevention is going to be one of the main things that you want to think about because this ties back to confidentiality in the CIA triad. Remember, everything really just ties back to the CIA triad because you don't want information or data to get into the hands of the wrong people but data loss prevention itself is really just a concept the policies and procedures that you build around it are what you actually are going to be following and all of that is going to dictate what vulnerabilities that you look for during your pen tests what applications that you might be able to download or might not be able to download whether or not your applications are visible through external ips so data loss prevention may be one of the main reasons why you don't do certain things or do certain things in your cybersecurity organization to make sure that you're always aligned with making sure that obviously company employee and customer data is kept confidential and covering as much of the perimeter as possible in terms of data leakage and just preventing data from getting into the wrong hands all right next thing on this list is identity and access management 
So I'm not gonna lie, this is definitely one of the areas I have not worked with very much, but I do know that it's one of the most important things. And it is exactly what it sounds like, identity and access management. So who you are, authentication, and access management, which is authorization. The first part of it is proving you are who you say you are. And the second part of it is whether or not you actually have access to the resource or the application or whatever you're trying to access. So first learning the difference between authorization and authentication is important when it comes to IAM. But typically most companies have some kind of IAM system set up and that could combine SSO, federation, whatever identity provider or IDP your company is using, any other access tokens, multi-factor authentication, basically all the concepts and things that tie back to a user trying to log in and access a certain resource or application or whatever it is, this all goes back to I am. And even though you may not be working on this on a day-to-day -day basis, there typically is going to be a pretty niche team that is focused on I am or access management, or maybe each team owns their own authorization and there needs to be requests sent to each team to get access to certain things in your company. Or maybe your company doesn't use SSO yet and it's a smaller company and you have to log into many different applications many different times. Hopefully they're working on some kind of SSO, but going into your new role as a cybersecurity professional and knowing about how your company handles identity and access management is going to be important regardless of whether you work on it hands-on because you're likely going to be answering security questions around authentication, authorization, and that is one of the main things people want to know. All right, next topic on this list, I won't go into too much detail, and that is cybersecurity threats. So I have made videos on the worst malware out there and different malware attacks and things like that. And you probably already learned about the different backdoors, Trojan horses, worms, all the different types of malware out there in your cybersecurity courses or boot camps. And of course, you can check out my videos linked down below if you haven't. But essentially understanding all of the malware exploits out there, keeping up with cybersecurity news to see what exploits are the most popular, which ones that attackers are taking advantage of, all the different types of threat actors that may, that may come into contact with your sector or your company specifically, whether it's nation states, hacktivists, script kitties, there's all kinds of levels and different motivations and motives of the threat actors out there. So just learning them and understanding them can definitely be important when you're looking at a security vulnerability or a potential exploit and who would want to take advantage of that exploit. And the last concept I want to mention on this list is encryption. So encryption is definitely one that you have learned about in the past. And this also ties back to confidentiality, making sure that your data is encrypted and that no one else is able to unencrypt that data without the key to unencrypt. And encryption really just touches every part of cybersecurity really. Whether you're sending an email, you, you wanna make sure that the email is sent securely. If you connect to a network, you wanna make sure that you have network traffic is also encrypted, hopefully. And if not, hopefully you're at least on a VPN or some other way of secure connection to whatever servers, applications, things that you're communicating with. And of course, at the basics, it also goes down to encrypting your data at rest, data in transit, the type of encryption that you're using. Hopefully it's one that is still secure and no longer deprecated because you would be surprised. There are many applications out there that may still allow deprecated encryption algorithms. And that's something you always want to check for when you're doing a pen test or if you're just a cybersecurity professional and you wanna make sure your applications are secure. And that could be as simple as making sure your application changes HTTP to HTTPS requests. And that's already a huge step in the right direction. I list a few common encryption algorithms on the screen to know, and a lot of these are explained in these in the CompTIA Security Plus certification. And honestly, that certification was the one that that really gave me a foot forward and I guess a foot in the door um, to understand different cybersecurity concepts. And I made a video on how I passed my Security Plus, which I can link down below if you guys want to check that out. But it's one of the best cybersecurity early career certifications that you can get. And I really do think it's a great option if you if you found any of these concepts in this video interesting. And it's also just a great certification for someone who is looking for a job as a security analyst or most cybersecurity early career professions. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any other cybersecurity concepts that you would like to add to this list. Feel free to also drop down in the comments if you have any questions about any of the about any of the concepts that were discussed in this video today as well as any other video topics that you might like to see in the future from me. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.